Welcome everyone back to Site Tech Intermountain Site Works training videos. Today we're going to be talking about stockpile measurements. The general consensus of this is we're going to draw a volume boundary line all the way around the outside of the pile, then switch over to uh, brake lines and surface points and kind of fill in the top and create this 3D model so the program is understanding what's happening up on top. Imagine pounding a concrete stake everywhere that we take a shot and then pulling a string line up to each one of those points and creating this 3D paper mache model. So let's get started. Right off the bat, we're going to change um, on our on site works, we're going to change over to a new work order. We want to measure all stockpiles um, in a new work order because they are a large amount of shots. So I'm going to go up to my hamburger menu, go to the project setup tab, change project, and then I'm going to add in a new work order right here. It's called stockpile. And in the instructions we could add a date or a specific material type if we needed to. Um, and then in this design I'm actually going to measure this stockpile over the top of a design, a roadway that we have created below here. This will make sense in a minute when we start doing um, the exports uh, for the report. So hit accept on that. We'll get started. So I'm going to change over to my uh, roller stuck in the mud icon, this uh, measure type settings. And I'm going to switch between a point to a new line string. And this is super important, this line type right here. We want to change that to a volume boundary. That's going to tell the program a boundary of where we're going to actually run the report in. And then in the line name, I like to call it base so I can keep everything organized. So now we're ready to measure. We're just going to walk over to our pile and start measuring right at the base of the pile. I also, I also like to take note of where I started. Um, sometimes I'll put a little boot mark in the dirt. You can also reference uh, the screen to see where you started because we don't want to shoot back over the top. We'll stop a, a little bit short and then connect these lines with one of these icons I'll show you in just a second. So I'm going to start right here and use the enter button to start taking my shots. And then every so often around my pile I'm just going to be taking these shots, being aware of where grades change and follow the contours all the way around this pile. And then I'm going to take one more shot. I notice that I've got my boot mark in the dirt there. I'm going to take one more shot just close to it. And then over here on this left gray taskbar, uh, the third icon from the bottom, the second square up, it's got three solid lines and a dotted line on it. I'm going to push him and it's going to close out that line string and that volume boundary. So now that we've got our volume boundary line measured in, we're going to switch over to a brake line and some surface points to kind of fill that area in. I'm going to start with some brake lines. So I'm going to go back into my roller stuck in the mud icon. I'm going to leave it on new line, but I'm going to change my line type to a break line. And then the line name, I'm just going to nickname the top. Hit accept, get that loaded in. I'm going to start over here on the base of this pile. We want to make sure that these lines stay on the inside of our volume boundary. Uh, so I can reference that with my little compass on my project to make sure I'm within those and I'm going to start measuring up this pile. So I'm going to start right here. And same thing, we're going to measure these contours as they happen coming up this pile. Anywhere that there's going to be a grade change. Then I'm going to measure across this flat spot on the edge. Let the program understand what's happening. 
understand what material is here. I'm going to go all the way around to this edge. And then I'm going to come down this inside. Measure all these points in as well. Okay, I'm actually going to stop measuring this line. And I'm going to pick up a new one to measure in this top area. So to stop measuring any brake line, we can just go under the hamburger menu and then just touch where it says measure. And it stopped measuring that one. I'm going to reposition myself down here at the bottom of my pile again because I've got this big flat area that I want to calculate. So I'm going to come all the way out to this outer edge. I'm just going to start another brake line. Hit accept on that. Shoot that one in. And then same thing. We're just going to work our way up this edge. All the way up to the top. Make sure I get quick shots on this rounded area so it understands what's happening. Take a couple of quick shots so it understands the rotation of this and coming back. So if you can imagine, it's pulling a digital string line down this slope from those bottom shots to these upper shots. I'm going to come back in. Here. I'm going to stop measuring that line. Menu, measure. Then I'm actually going to switch over to some surface points and kind of fill in some of these oddball areas that I don't really need to measure with a string line or a, a brake line. So back into the roller stuck in the mud. I'm going to switch over to a point. And then that point type I'm just going to make sure is set to a surface. The point name doesn't really matter, but I want to ta change this show every time to no, so that this screen doesn't pop up on me every time I take a shot. So then if I've got any weird odd areas that I need to reach, especially on the side of this pile, I can measure those in as surface points. So I'll get just a couple. This pile is pretty consistent slope to the bottom. I did notice over here that we've got a little bit of a bulb sticking out. So I'm going to measure this in here and there so that the program understands what's happening. And that's it. Now we're ready to run our reports. I'm just going to come under my menu here and then go down to this tab that says Kogo. Under Kogo, there's the first tab that says Review and Edit Data. It defaults to the item that I need, which is this Compute Volume, and it just wants me to select the boundaries. So I'm going to select that outer line. That's my volume boundary line. And then I can run this report. Uh, the first style of reports allows us to add in uh, just a scale factor. It's going to pull the elevation from those points that we shot on the bottom on that vo volume boundary line and just pull them straight underneath this pile to where it meets on the elevation of those other shots. So depending on your material type you could add in that expansion. It also allows for shrinkage and then if we just hit accept it's going to run that report and we can see right there a net cut balance 225.19 cubic yards. So, so the second way of running the reports allows us to uh, measure this to an entered elevation. So right here where it says stockpile, this drop down menu will allow us to change to that entered elevation. Now I could key in whatever elevation I wanted to, meaning I could take out the dirt that's on this pile and then take it down to a certain elevation or if I wanted to leave a certain amount of material here it's going to take this this boundary area to whatever that elevation is. Uh, I measured this all as a 100. Uh, I'm not sure what my uh, elevation of those points were but I can view that if I hit this little settings gear here. This is my map display options. 
I can turn on point elevations. We can check and see. Looks like these are all close to 99, 98-ish. So I'm gonna say I wanna take this whole pile down to 96. And I'll hit accept. And now we can see it calculated the volume for the pile plus uh, or minus that um, the two feet um, that we asked the program to do. We got a net cut balance of 456.3 cubic yards. So our third option in stockpile reports um, is to be able to run this report over the top of a design. Now remember in to do this we have to measure the stockpile over the top of, of a, a current design. You can see my red lines there I have a roadway running underneath me. So again I'm gonna hit this little drop down arrow. I'm gonna to switch to measure to design. Um, and then it's gonna take this whole pile down to whatever finish grade is. It also allows me to do a vertical offset. So if I wanted to account for the thickness of my asphalt plus uh, road base and bank run, uh, I could bring that all the way down to subgrade. So we could do a minus one foot for all of those items. We'll actually just do a one foot solid. The offset direction, I'm gonna go as below. If I wanted to add in a scale factor, I could as well right there. I'm just gonna hit accept and run that report. And then we've got a net cut balance of 265.3 cubic yards. Um, the last thing that we can do, you'll notice this little clipboard icon in the upper right hand corner. We can save any of these reports at any time. We can use the camera on the data collector to actually take pictures of our pile if we wanted to. And we can save those to our report. Um, we can add comments to it. It'll show us the time of day, um, when it was done, and the actual cubic yardage of it. So we can save this as uh, topsoil. And then this little checkbox in the bottom left hand corner, I can select that. That'll open the file location in uh, the file explorer and show me where it's actually saved. I'm gonna hit save right here. It's gonna open up my file explorer and show me where that PDF is. And then if I had an email tied to my data collector, I could copy that, put it right to my email, copy that and put it right to my thumb drive. And I have that PDF report that I can open up and view that item.